What's up, guys? Tookie here, back again. This is the Manhattan Project, my at least most recent series, franchise mode series here on NHL 17, using the New York Rangers, of course. We are in Season 2. We are at the very end of Season 2, at least the regular season, and we find ourselves in a very interesting spot. Of course, we are the defending Stanley Cup champions, having won last year as the eighth seed. Now we are in a very interesting spot, as I mentioned, where we could still end up as the eighth seed. It could happen. Or we could miss out on the playoffs by tiebreaker. If we win, cool. But we need the Islanders to lose. Flat out. If we win and the Islanders win, we're fucked. And we're out of the postseason. We have to win this game. It is a playoff game against the Tampa Bay Lightning here. And even if we win, again, the Islanders need to lose. So what happens with the rest of this episode? Whether or not it's the beginning of the playoffs or is it a draft video? We'll find out in a minute. But I don't know. I don't know. I can't say for sure what's going to happen. We are trying a different line, you know, different line combinations in effort to make this work. We're going back with our primary top line of Zuccarello, Zabana, Jed Yager. JT Miller's going to be on the second line with Hayes and Nino Niederreiter. Third line's going to be Kreider, Boyle, BC. Fourth line of Quempel, Nieves, and Pavel Bushnevich. On defense, trying something different again where we have one of our three best defensemen on each line instead of having Shattenkirk with McDonough. It's going to be Holden, Shattenkirk, McDonough, D'Angelo, Barragolazov, and Brady Shea. I was tempted to have Barragolazov with Ryan McDonough. Decided against it. We'll see how it works out. And of course, of course, Henrik Lundqvist is between the pipes in what could be his final season. At the very least, at the very least, we did achieve our goal. And we won Hank a cup before he retired, but this would be a pretty damn sad way <laughs> to end his career. So first up, we have to sim this game against the Lightning. Win, and we might be in. Lose, and we are absolutely screwed. Although I do, I do suppose that an overtime loss and a flat-out Islanders loss could help us. You get the point, though. The pressure's on. The pressure is on. So let's do this. Oh, God. First period of game 82. Stamkos gets the opening goal. Stamkos gets the opening goal. Seven shots apiece. But Stammer gets the lone goal. Second period. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Can I restart the episode, please? <laughs> Does anyone be opposed to me restarting the episode? Fuck sake, man. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Kunitz, Callahan, and Adam Ernie. I'm just going to hit the button. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> of course. Of course we were just short. Oh my god, this fucking team. <laughs> oh my god. What perfect way. What a perfect way to end the season. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, so... Um, whew, Steven Stamko scored the opening goal. Uh, Kunitz, Callahan, and Ernie made it 4 nothing. Johnson made it 5 nothing, And then Hayes, Zuccarello with two goals, and Jimmy Vesey made it 5-4. to four, And we just ran out of time. We just ran out of fucking time. <laughs> and the defending Stanley Cup champions are out. It, fuck the three stars. And we... We're not even going to make the postseason. 
after having an improved defense compared to what we had last year. Getting someone like Nino Niederreiter to replace Rick Nash. We don't even make the playoffs. And boy, boy, don't I want. Don't I want. And let me, did the Islanders win at least? Like, please tell me, please tell me they at least won so that it wouldn't have mattered. Please. Just tell me they won and that it wouldn't have mattered. Why am I getting a waiver claim this late on Michael Kempney? He has one year left. It doesn't matter. They lost! They fucking lost! All we had to do was win! Just lose in overtime! Get that fifth goal! You... Of course! Of course they lost! Can I... I've never... I have never... Wanted... To start an episode over... More than this one! Let me fucking tell you. Of course they lost! All we had to do... Was lose... In overtime... Or shootout... Much like we did to the Islanders not too long ago. And we would have been in the goddamn postseason as the 8th seed yet again. Where we probably would have been mugged by the Islanders. But damn it, we would have been there. And instead, instead, we lose 5-4 to four on home ice. <laughs> and we're not in the postseason. We're not in the postseason. Because of a fucking tiebreaker. Because of a fucking tiebreaker. Let's go to the draft, shall we? Let's move on. Although the Wolf Pack should be making the playoffs. So that's great. We'll follow along with them. They weren't as good this year as they were last year. So they'll probably lose. <sighs> we lost three straight games. All we had to do was lose to Tampa in overtime. You know how bad of a fucking choke job that is to miss out on the postseason? Three games left. Three games. All you needed was three points. And you get... No, all you needed was two points. In three games, as it turns out, all you needed was two points. Just two. We got one. God damn Rangers, man. <sighs> the Hartford Wolfpack are playing the Hershey Bears, which is not a very good sign at all. They lose game one. You know what? Here, I mean, if it's going to be a draft episode, then fuck it. We might as well just take our time to go through this, then do the draft, whatever, whatever. Oh, my God. All right. Game two. Let's follow along, shall we? Let's follow along. Yeah. First period of game two, Malta Stromwall, thank you, scoring on Ilya Samsonov. Second period is scoreless in the third period. Hey, we didn't fucking blow it. Girl Capper's off. It's a 2 0 victory. The shutout. The shutout for the Wolf Pack, and they are back in the series. Georgiev with the 24 safe shutout. Holy shit. In some ways, we well, literally, we actually have a victory. It's a it's a literal victory. We actually won something in this episode. So that's good. Game three, because damn it, we need the Wolf Pack to make it far, and hopefully they can. First period, goal apiece, Neil Pionk and Riley Barber. Second period is scoreless. Third period, can we get the win? At least not in regulation. Can we do it in overtime? Can we do it in double overtime? Yes, we can. Robin Kovacs, the Swedes, getting it done. Never thought I'd say that, but it is at the AHL level. We all know once they take the jump to the NHL level that they'll fuck it up and never win anything except for Henrik Lundqvist. He's the only one. Damn it. Uh, game four. I'll just send this from the calendar. Let's hope for the best. Hey, 5-1 victory. The Wolfpack are moving on. They did lose Vinny Lettieri, though, which really kind of sucks. He's one of their better players. Who can we get into the lineup instead of him? I think it'll be Lidl or Petrus Palmu. I'm not sure. Let's go best lines. Let's take an Albin out of the lineup. Let's take an Albin out of the lineup. Who can we put in? It's going to be Lidl, isn't it? It's going to be Lidl. 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 And then the defense is good. The goaltending is not. we got to take out David Rittich in exchange for Brandon Halverson. I'm not even sure how Rittich is in there if he's a 77. 
Don't even want to look at that main team. I'm disgusted by each and every one of you. Thank you for the cup in year one. But as it stands right now, you can all just leave. Just leave. The Wolfpack playing the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, who uh, swept their first round matchup. So this is real promising. Like, playing them in the second round, we will sim the first two games on the road. We'll see how that works out for us. We lost the first one in overtime. one nothing. Great. Good start. Real good start. Perfect. And game two, we lost again. That's, yep, yeah, okay. We're just... Once again, it's, oh, hey, yeah, you made it past the next round when you avoided disaster. And here we go. Let's just absolutely blow it. It's fine. No, nobody... Nobody's concerned about winning in the postseason. It's fine. Success? What's success? We don't know. Clearly, we're Hartford. Rat bastards. Anyway, let's keep going. Basically, I'm trying to delay the inevitable. Because we're going to get to the draft. It's not going to work out well either, I'm sure. Uh, we will sim game three. We're on home ice. Maybe we can make the most of it, right? Pfft. Yeah, fucking right. First period of game three. Hey, Jason Megna, thank you for showing up. Second period. Tiffles. Tiffles or Tiffles? It's probably Tiffles. I'm going to say Tiffles because it's funny. Third period. That's not funny. That's not funny at all. Zach Trotman, Bluger. Bluger. Carter Rowney. Rowney outside. We are getting kicked to the curb just going to sim to the draft at this point. The Hartford Wolfpack get absolutely stomped by the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. And this season will end with tremendous disappointment. The Penguins complete the sweep. I have never wanted to restart an episode more than this one. Let me tell you, as we miss the postseason, the Hartford Wolfpack get ripped apart by the Penguins. What kind of wolf pack gets ripped apart by penguins? Tell me that. Some fucking wolf pack you are. Damn it. And we are out entirely. So let's take a look. Who's winning the cup in 2018? Who's it going to be? It's the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Rockford won the Calder Cup. Lovely. The Pittsburgh Penguins, Stanley Cup champions yet again, because that's all that ever happens. That's all they do. Now, I, I do want to take a look at our lineup. Who, like, who really, and Henrik Zetterberg, wow, Minnesota did incredibly well. They must have made the cup final. They must have. Let's take a look, though, at the, oh, that's right, we didn't make the postseason. We didn't make the postseason. I was thinking of Hartford. I want to take a look at how they did. And the top line did all right. Stromwall and Kappers off, but... Oh, God. Oh, God. Right. I don't remember if I took a look at the stats from this past season. I think I did. I think I did. I think I took a look at our stats for just being the worst. But I can't quite remember. And you know what? I'd say that pretty much speaks for itself. When our leading scorers are tied with 54 points, I think that pretty much speaks for itself. I mean, yeah, the fact that our fourth line center outscored Mika Zibanejad, Kreider, Yager, Kevin Hayes. I, I don't, I just, I, I don't even want to look at the rest of these stats. It's sickening in a way. And, and, and by in a way, I mean just in general, it's sickening. Thank you, uh, both goaltenders, for having just awful save percentages. Fact is, we didn't deserve to make the playoffs, clearly. And so we didn't. And so we didn't. So we'll have, to, we'll have to really put some thought into what we are doing next, which, by the way, I definitely don't recall looking at these point totals. Tarasenko led the league in points. As far as surprising names, Kyle Palmieri with 78 points, Pasta with 78 points. I mean, not surprising. Pasta's amazing. But I'm just saying, the goal-scoring king was Vladimir Tarasenko. The assist leader was Pasternak with 65 uh, helpers. That is a bit surprising, though, is it not? That is a bit surprising. 
And down in the AHL, even though the Wolfpack failed in the regular season, you still have Capras off with 60 points, which is pretty damn promising. But let's go ahead. We'll move forward. We'll move forward. We'll find out that Hank retired. Actually, i got to look at the awards really quick, don't I? As the Penguins reclaim the Stanley Cup, the Caps did win the President's Trophy. Again, it means absolutely nothing. Tarasenko wins the Art Ross. The heart goes to Jamie Benn. A little bit surprising. Eric Carlson wins the Norris. The Lady Bing goes to Patrick Kane. The Calder goes to Pierre-Luc Dubois. Kind of surprising? Maybe? I don't know. Conn Smythe goes to Phil Kessel, as it should. He is long overdue for winning a Conn Smythe. The Vezina goes to Braden Holpe, as does the Jennings. Uh, Brendan Smith ended up winning the Masterton, so congrats to you. Kopitar wins the Selkie. Jamie Benn wins the Ted Lindsay. And Tarasenko gets that Rocket Richard Trophy. Rockford dominating back-to-back -back Calder Cups. Well done for them. I believe that's Tyler Kelleher. Uh, put up the most points. He was also the league MVP. Steve Moses scored the most goals and was apparently the rookie of the year, but that's just because we added him in, so I guess I'm not all that surprised. Lucas Bengston wins the Eddie Shore Award. Chris Nell, who we traded to Syracuse, was the goalie of the year, so that's... Oh, God, isn't that great? Once again, we trade a goalie only for them to be the goalie of the year. Barube was the MVP of the playoffs, and that is pretty much it. That's pretty much it. What a way to end this season. What a way. Oh, my God, for this season to end. Defending Stanley Cup champions miss out on the playoffs because of a loss on the last day of the season. The Wolfpack falls short in the playoffs again. And now we get to move forward, and I have no clue what to expect as we move forward. We don't have our first round pick, of course, which I'm kind of happy about. We gave up our first round pick to acquire Nino Niederreiter there, the first and the third. Minnesota moved up to 12th or ended up with the 12th pick. So thank God, thank God, the Wild, who had a, you know, clearly had a really good season anyway, thank God they didn't win the lottery, is all I'm saying. The Florida Panthers end up with the number one pick. The Vancouver Canucks. Also up there again. So, yeah. Remember, no first round pick because we traded it. Because we tried to be good. So, yeah. That's great. And then Yogs retires. You, you probably should have done that a season or two before. or You probably should have done that last year as a cup champion. Instead of playing one more season, having a really disappointing year. And then retiring without having played in the playoffs in your last year. I respect you. You're a legend. I'm glad you won the Con Smythe. I'm glad you won the extra cup. But yeah. Hank didn't retire though, so that's good. <laughs> at least we're not going to have a complete goalie crisis at the moment. But Yaramir Yager has retired as far as the rest of the league. And I do feel a bit bad. I mean, Joe Thornton retires as well. Iggy and Doan both retire as free agents, which is pretty disappointing. Marion Hosa retires, Patrick Marlowe, uh, Daniel Sedim, but not Henrik from the looks of it. Jason Spezza, Redeem Rabata, UC Jokinen, a couple of other pretty big names. Cronwall, uh, some scrub. Uh, Nicholas Hagman? Wow, he was still listed, huh? Vernon Fiddler, Chris Neal, Ron Hainsey, Seidenberg, 2-2. Damn, what a class of retired players, let me tell you. What a class. Anyway, it's time for the draft. Now, last year at the draft, of course, we... Oh, of course, we, you know, got rid of Rick Nash. We traded up to get Wyatt Anderson. All in all, I felt like it was a pretty damn good draft. This time out, though, I don't know what to expect, right? I don't know what to expect. Now, we are down to contenders instead of champions, mind you. I don't know what to expect for the upcoming offseason, but looking at our draft picks, we have two seconds, quite a few thirds. So we could trade up if we wanted to to get into the first round, or we could just hold on to our picks, and rather than going for a ton of good picks, we could just try to bolster our organizational depth at the moment. I don't think there's any way 
We trade up for Dolan, Baleno, Zadina, Kachuk, Andre Sebechnikov. That's not going to happen. Uh, you also have McLeod, uh, Rasainen, who is definitely a generated player. Uh, Yuka Rasainen, 19-year-old Finn. Ed McIsaac, Bodie Wild. Again, we have added real uh, prospects into the game, of course. I mean, our best bet, like I said, we could probably find a way to trade up into the first round. It would probably have to be late into the first round, though. And at that point, it's just a crapshoot anyway, as far as these players go. So, is that a Kim Weeding? That'd be hilarious. It is. It's a Kim Weeding. We might have to pick him up. But he's Swedish this time, so never mind. Um, God damn. Do we try to trade up is the question. Which, I mean, it would be nice to end up with some of these players, but I just don't know if we can pull it off. We'd have to give up a lot to get there. Absolutely. And I guess let's talk to, let's say, Philly first. Do they want to trade that pick? They do. Let's see if I'm able to trade up without having to do anything too ridiculous. Because there are no players at the moment that I want to give up on. And as it is value-wise, it's not really there. So that's great. Second round pick, I don't think we could really do it. Like, I'd have to give up both seconds and probably multiple thirds to make that happen. So that's just not worth it. That's really not worth it. So we're just going to stay with the picks we have. I'm not sure how this draft is going to go. It's probably going to be pretty brutal. It's amazing. It's amazing how things can go from year to year. We win the cup. It's looking great. And now this year we missed the postseason on the last day. And then we, of course, don't have our first round pick. And it's just peaks and valleys, man. Peaks and valleys. Andre Svechnikov went number one to Florida. Rasmus Dolan went second to Vancouver. Joe Valeno third to Colorado. Uh, Brady Kachuk to Carolina. Sedinia to Detroit. You got Bodie Wild, Ryan McLeod, Benoit Guru. Jared McIsaac goes to New Jersey. Quentin Hughes to Calgary. He had an elite goalie in Tootin to be drafted by the Blackhawks. A couple of other names. Evan Bouchard, Nando Eggenberg, David Lavin. And from there, the familiar names fall off. That is for sure. Wow, Minnesota gets a high seventh defenseman in the first round. That's a bit rough. Anyway, let's see what we can do here, shall we? Let's see. Can we avoid having this pick be a complete disaster is the question. There's such a broad range of players to pick from, which is kind of concerning. Very concerning, really. Who do we have? Yuri Nachushkin, a 20-year-old offensive defenseman, Estonian, I do believe. Uh, Vince Lysak, Tony Lamaninen, Betts. We have a goalie. And Swolminen, who would probably... Be a good pickup. Is he the last goalie left in the draft? At least in this round, he is. When's our next pick after this? That's the that's the main question. We are taking him right now. Best goalie left in the draft. We will absolutely select him. Even if we don't necessarily need him, trade value-wise, it's going to work out. Now, obviously, last year's draft, and he's medium starters, so that's not bad. Last year's draft, you know, we avoided defensemen and goalies for the most part because we didn't necessarily need him. But we also knew the majority of the forwards were at least a bit more reliable. As opposed to this draft where you really start to see the influence of computer-generated players. And it's just that much more of a crapshoot. So, we'll see what happens. As it is, I might have gone with that defenseman that Ottawa ended up with. So, I'm not too happy. Or not too happy. I'm fucking ecstatic. Um, I'm not too concerned with having picked the goalie at that point. As far as who we take next, fuck if I know. <laughs> like, really, I have no idea. There are so many different guys. And again, it really is just hope for the best. That's all you can do is to just hope for the best. To the point where I'm almost tempted to just let the game pick for me. In a move that has worked out in the past, I am sure Riley Sutter is just awful. So we won't take him. Take him? We won't take him either. Spencer Berard has a 
Power forward, Sam Cracknell. You have Tyler Betts. Nachushkin might not be a bad option because he's an overager. Oleg Kalinin, you got Machovsky. Oldrich, or Oldrich? Oldrich? Hey, Duke. Hey, Duke. Uh, Nikolai Svitov is an option as well. Max Patterson, who I actually don't know how good he will be. Huh. Who else do we have? Uh, Francis Mapletoft. Cam Goldman. And Adam Vigilante. Vigilante. Right. Right, right, right. I just... Fucking hell, I don't know, man. I don't know. Do we take the Russian Oleg Kalinin? Do we take the Czech, I do believe, Richard Machovsky? Or do we let the game pick for me? That is the question. That is the question. You know what? I might just take Sutter. Or not Sutter, it'd be Sutter. I might just take Sutter and Patterson and hope that they're at least high AHL top six. Which I can't even guarantee that. You know, I'll let the game pick for me. For this pick, at least. Well, we'll, we'll actually, is this my... Oh, shit, this is my last pick of the round. You know what? Screw it. Nope, didn't mean to hit that. EA! My, uh... My fate's in your hands here. Well, let's see. Who'd the game pick for me? Berard! Medium top nine. Well, I wasn't going to pick him. So I'm alright with that. Who goes next? Svitov, who I was tempted to pick. Cracknell's not bad. Goldman is awful. Lysak is decent. Machovsky is someone I was definitely thinking about picking, so that's not too bad. Let me just sim to the third round, where we have the number one pick of said round. But let's see. Hayduke wasn't great. Glad I didn't take Kim Weeding. I had a feeling Sutter and Patterson were both high AHL top six, and they were. They wouldn't have been bad picks, but I'm all right with the medium top nine guy that we ended up with. So EA certainly did me a favor there. I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. Now in the third round, again, it's going to be just a lot of guessing. That is for sure. But let's see. We have Ron Nesbitt. We have Raymond Gorin. Who else do we have? A Marvin Ripon. Anybody else? Kevin McFarland and Barry Liston. Aside from that, we have uh, a Ricard Hug, who I think is a, I'm pretty sure is a real player. Right, well, I'm leaning towards, I'm leaning towards either the two-way forward or one of the defensemen. Kevin McFarland is 19. Let's take a look at Gorin. 17 years old, he's going to be a ways away. And then Barry Liston. Right. You know what? Let's take Kevin McFarland. And we'll hope for the best. Kevin McFarland, please be decent. Medium top nine. Not too shabby for a third round pick. And all things considered, he was pretty much the best guy to go with. I mean, one of those two defensemen that is kind of the equivalent. And that's probably who I would have gone with had I made the pick myself. So that's not too bad. Now I have no idea who to pick. Because there's a reason why Nesbitt is still available, I'm sure. But then when you talk about, well, who's in the third round, again, it's an absolute crapshoot. Uh, you do have this two-way forward center, Ben Jones, who is real. Wasn't expecting that. So I do know at the very least he's a high AHL player. Uh, Kostitsin has a sniper, maybe not. Dominic Voleshnicek. God, that name. I didn't know how to pronounce it in previous series. I don't know how to pronounce it now, and I don't care. You have Would that be George or Georg Erhoff? <laughs> What would that be, the German defenseman? You have Gabriel Walensky, Igor Turkov. Anybody else? We got the power forward, Kyle West. Right. Card Hug is also still available. So, 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 so. Part of me wants to go with the German Erhoff there. Other part of me wants to pick Jones. Turakov, you know what? West might not be a bad pick. He's an overager, six foot four power forward. Screw it, we'll take him. Kyle West, you are our next pick. Again, it's just shot in the dark. Hope for the best. And whew. Well, that's a miss. That's that's a miss. 
Yep. Yep. That's 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 yep. That's just great, isn't it? Let's just send to our next pick. All right. Well, West, you um, you failed me, buddy. You failed me. We can make up for it with this next pick, hopefully. My God. When's our next pick after this, by the way? Because we did have four third. Oh, we get back-to-back -back picks right now. Perfect. So, for the Helibits, for the Helibits and the Halibits, I'm going to take Ricard. Oh, you're Swedish. No, thank you. No, thank you. Stotler. Livio Stotler. I'm sure that you're just awful, but I'm going to pick you. Because why not? Medium seventh. You know, all things considered, especially compared to the last pick, not the worst selection in the world. Close to it, but not the worst. And with the next pick after that, we're going to go for the German, Erhoff. Please don't be low top six. You were medium top six. All right, that's a victory. That's a victory. So far, I would consider at least one of our picks to be awful. And actually, that was our last pick of the third round. I was mistaken. It was three... Oh, wait, that was our fourth. Damn. You know what? All things considered, judging by some of the other players that were selected after the fact, we did all right. Should have gone with Hug, though, over West. And Jordan Hallett selected by the Pittsburgh Penguins. By the Pittsburgh Penguins. Right. Let's keep going. Can we, can we at least find something to be happy about with this episode? That's all we're looking for at this point. It's just a little bit of a pick-me-up after missing the damn postseason. Uh, you have Nolan Reed, Bartek Bison's available, Adam Cadillac. Cadillac. You know, I'll we'll take him. I won't even look at other people. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's not, let's not, let's, let's not do this and say that we did. You are hot garbage. Granted, this, it's not like there are these tremendous players in the draft at this point. So I guess it's not as big of a mistake as it was when we selected West. But this draft is looking a bit rough at this point, is it not? No point in trying to trade up. It's just disappointing in general to have, you know, ended up with some of the players that we have. Uh, Bernie might be the next pick. We could go with another German. Uh, Rick Betts. Uh, Marco Renkowitz. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, we have a defenseman, Konstantin Chernyuk. 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 Konstantin. Nice stitches, buddy. Nice stitches. Ah, uh, God. Jacob Naveau is available as well. Are you going to be awful, though, is the question. Another power forward in Edward Lutzer. I have no idea. I have no idea. Let's go with, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> oh, God, Navo, here's the pick. You're going to be terrible, too, aren't you? You are going to be awful. Yep, you are pretty much awful. Great. Great. Well, what else can we do, then, huh? In the fifth round, nothing but garbage being selected before this pick. Can we... Uh, I know that's going to be Vladimir Kuznetsov, so I'm not even going to look at him. Uh, Tyler McCormick. You have Taylor Egan. We have another Finnish playmaker. Matthew Pache. Might not be the worst pick in the world. Oh, God. Carl Gervais. Friend, friend and teammate... Of Shrek, might I add. And uh, Antoine Cre B B B Belzile. I'm calling you Belzile or Belzile. It's probably Belzile, though. Right. Adam Chizo. I love that name. Adam Chizo. But you know what? We're probably going to go with. Uh... I don't know. I'm going to take the risk on Matthew Pache, I guess. I guess. Please be half the low seventh. Okay. There is nothing redeeming about this draft at this stage. Just nothing. I guess the low seventh wouldn't have been a bad player to take, but needless to say, it is just slim pickings. If it wasn't before, it certainly is now. 
As far as who else to take, I'll pick uh, Egan. 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 You're shit too. Great. Oh, God. All right. Well, this is just... This episode has been something else, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Who can we get here in the sixth round that might be able to change my mind about how bad of an episode it's been? At this stage, we're essentially... We're essentially just looking for somebody who we could eventually trade. Right? I mean, I could trade the sixth round pick for a sixth next year or a fifth next year. Odds are whoever we pick up will at least still be worth something half decent and we'll be able to get those picks in general uh aziz eliz hell of a name wouldn't wouldn't factor you in as a german though uh, we have an aiden mcfarland that would be our second to farm benjamin gagne uh david vosnica kvosnica david uh nope not not trying that elia rivia I, ha I have to draft Elia Rivia, don't I? Or, El or would it be uh, El Elia Rivia? It'd be Rivia. Raviva. It wouldn't be Raviva. But still. Still. Uh, Gabriel Bilodeau. Bilodeau. And you know what? It's just at this point, who gives a shit? Just who cares? I, I care. I hope you care too, considering you're watching this one way or another. You know what I'm trying to say. Though. Justin Brazio. You're the guy, or Brazo. Yeah, you're the guy, all right. The worst draft pick that has ever been drafted. You're the guy. Well, let me tell you. Is that the end of our uh, selections? It is. Great. Well, needless to say, the trend of this episode being overly disappointing has continued. They, it, It's... It's continued. What a rough way for this episode to go. So much promise, so much potential, and we fell short as a franchise in pretty much every aspect. In pretty much every aspect. How that happened, I don't know, but it's been a tale of two seasons. On one, you know, on one hand, we won the cup in year one, and everything was looking great. And then this season happened. This season happened. And I guess we got knocked back down to reality a little bit. And heading into next season, we certainly have some question marks as to what is going to happen with this team. What kind of progression are we going to get from certain players? Will there be any big-time free agents available? We do have some other players that we need to re-sign to bring back. At the very least, we don't have Yormir Yager's cap hit on the books anymore. There's a lot of work to be done to make sure that the New York Rangers are competitive in Season 3. And it might take a different approach, considering our last effort resulted in us missing the postseason. So guys, that will do it for this episode of the Manhattan Project. Um, first season gets an A-plus this season. I oh, will give it a D minus <laughs> if we're considering this a project. Uh, it's it's a failing grade, basically, basically. Anyway, for those on uh, Twitch, of course, stick around. For those on YouTube watching this after the fact, we're done here. We're done here. I'm sorry. This episode, as far as what we accomplished, the answer is not much, if uh, nothing at all, essentially. But maybe, just maybe, we can look to rebound here in the new future. In the new future? In the near future. It could be a new future. It could be a new day, a new dawn, a new life for the New York Rangers. Let's hope so. I don't know if it can get any worse than what just happened here, though. So, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're on YouTube, you know what you got to do to support the video and the channel. I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time.